Welcome again to one of my uh, webinars. Um, I want to thank you for being here and for listening and for your valuable questions. I've loved the ones you've done in the previous and if you're new, I hope you can ask something at the end. I also want to thank Brybot for sponsoring this uh, webinar. And uh, we're gonna start right now. Today's um, seminar or webinar, it's about uh, something that I consider very important, um, which is skin and oral cancer. I decided to say uh, to keep it simple because I always try to deliver the best information to my patients and to just uh, deliver simple information so they can actually um, act. <clears throat> well, my name is um, Jaime Mesa. I'm, I'm a physician. Uh, I work at uh, the emergency room and also in preventive medicine, so that's why I like certain of these topics like cancers and other uh, preventable diseases. Um, talking about skin cancer, how much does it affect Americans? Uh, well, it affects uh, Americans a lot. Skin cancer is the most common uh, cancer in the United States. It's, uh, although it is not the leading cause of death because of cancer, it is the most common cancer in the U.S. That's a good and a bad thing, and I'm going to talk about that later. Combined skin cancer surpasses lung, breast, and prostate cancer altogether in new cancers per year. So it's actually, it's quite bigger than all of them combined. 20% of all Americans will develop a type of skin cancer over the cor uh, their course of a, la uh, of a lifetime. So that's something that you should really take into account. One of five is going to have uh, one type of skin cancer, which is a lot. Basically, one uh, or two of us listening to this presentation might have um, skin cancer once in their life. Both skin cancer and or Oral cancer have similar death rates, which is one death per minute, only in the United States. That means every minute somebody is, die is dying from skin cancer. That's pretty alarming, if you ask me. I think that's very, very bad. And uh, those diagnosed with cancer, uh, only half will survive five or uh, more years. And I'm talking about, obviously, oral cancer. Uh, in this particular case, not skin cancer, but oral cancer. Only only half of them will survive five more years. That is something that can be prevented, and that's why I would like to talk about this subject. What is skin and oral cancer? Well, cancers all are very similar. Basically, it's a series of conditions in which there is an abnormal fast cell growth and reproduction and uh, multiplication rate. In this case, the cells are the epidermal cells, uh, the ones that are affected. That means epidermal means the surface. Probably uh, I'll be talking about the skin and also the, uh, the surface of the tongue, basically. There are multiple types of uh, skin cancer but um, basal cell carcinoma, squamous cell carcinoma, and melanoma are the top three. Out of this, um, squamous cell carcinoma, it's the one that affects the tongue, and that's the leading cause of oral cancer uh, in the world. So that's why I chose to talk about both of them because they're very related. Uh, here are some pictures, some images, for you, for us to understand a little bit more. I'm gonna go deep in that uh, later. Um, obviously, that explanation uh, leaves certain uh, questions and I'm trying to explain a little bit more about um, what I just explained. Well, the, the skin, uh, it's made of multiple layers, which uh, are some, very superficial and they start going deep and deep and they are called uh, different names for our, for us doctors um, depending on what types of cells we see on each layer. Uh, 
here um, there are squamous cells and um, basal cells and the melanocytes, which are the cells that are in charge of producing the skin pigment. Uh, if you have more melanocytes and more pigment, obviously your skin is going to be uh, darker. Um, and uh, for albinos, well, they don't, the, the melanocytes are not able to produce that pigment, so that's why uh, their skin is totally white. Uh, so depending on what cell is the one that's reproducing faster and multiplying out of control, the, the different cancer it, uh, will appear. Here you see in, the, in this bigger um, like picture or drawing, you can see the, the different types of cancers I've just mentioned. Here, just as a, as a curious fact, you can see this is the, the part of the skin that produces sweat, okay? Just if you were wondering what's that. What are the risk factors for um, this type of cancers? Well, obviously we all know about it. We hear, we hear about it all the time. Exposure, sunlight exposure, that's number one risk factor. Um, and there's some controversy about how to avoid this risk factor, and I'm going to talk about it later. But I just want to say that this is number one. Um, now we know that uh, the risk of skin cancer uh, can be greater like five times greater for somebody who's had more than four skin burns in their lives especially when they were kids so yes it is very important for us to take care of our skin um, as much as we can uh, not only that but um, tanning um, machines are now considered uh, very hazardous some countries are trying to ban the use of these machines because they, uh, they were actually considered type one, which is like a lower risk for cancer. And now they're considered uh, type two, <clears throat> which is a moderate risk. That means uh, definitely there's a relationship between the exposure to the UV rays of the tanning beds and the, and the appearance of skin cancer. So I wouldn't recommend it. Being male, that's a risk factor. We do not know exactly why. Uh, we don't know if it's a hormonal thing or just the way males are exposed to sunlight, but we, know, we do know males have a greater chance to have skin cancer. Mm, it's not very different, but let's say like, out of 10 people with skin cancer, I would say 60% are men, something, something about like that. Um, having more, ha having a lot of moles in your, in your skin, obviously, uh, especially in the places which are exposed to sunlight, in the, in the case of the picture I chose was the face. Uh, it is said that having more than 50 moles in your body gives you uh, twice as much risk of having skin cancer than people who don't. Nowadays, there are lots of people who have it, but if, especially if you have those moles in your face or in skin that is exposed to sunlight, you have more risk, so you should uh, be extra careful. Of course, uh, skin aging, that is something that is um, definitely un unavoidable, but of course, um, it is also related with sunlight skin damage it's cumulative which means that uh, it doesn't necessarily go back to normal after you uh, stop exposing yourself um, so it accumulates uh, with age so of course the chance is greater that's why probably uh, that's why uh, one of out of five people will, will have skin cancer because it's it's the accumulation of exposure uh, for years and years like many or most cancers smoking it's a great risk factor and um, now for oral cancer uh, well smoking obviously uh, certain types of tobacco and uh, it's been uh, very controversial about smoking marijuana if it's 
as harmful as um, <clears throat> tobacco. Tobacco. The thing is that uh, the marijuana doesn't necessarily have the same chemical products as uh, regular cigarettes, but in certain uh, in certain type of marijuana, the, the process they use to to fabricate fabricate it does have certain chemicals that are as uh, <clears throat> damaging as the cigarette. So I I would consider both. Um, risk factors and the HPV, the human papilloma virus, it's very important for um, certain types of uh, oral cancer, especially um, esophagus cancer nowadays. Uh, we know, uh, actually, we, we've had a like a famous actor who had it. I think it was, um, uh, well, he, he, he was talking about it on TV and on the news because everybody was worried because nobody knew that human papilloma virus could actually affect um, men, but it, but it does. Uh, as I explained in some other um, webinar, which was the, the cervical cancer, well, a, a human papilloma virus, it's um, associated with uh, cervical cancer, also with penis cancer and certain cancers of the mouth. So, uh, Yes, that's definitely a risk factor. And last, for oral cancer, uh, hot beverages are associated with higher risk, especially also for um, cancer of the esophagus. Not many people know about that, so just for you to know, this is important. Two hot beverages are, very, are, are dangerous. What are the symptoms of you having skin um, cancer or oral cancer? Well, uh, having just a bump, they're very, uh, I would say, very difficult to actually notice because some of them might seem very normal and like nothing you would really pay attention, but you, you should. You have a bump that simply appears somewhere on your skin or on your tongue. If you have a sore that it's taking like a lot of time to heal. Doesn't have to be necessarily painful. That's one of the things that people don't worry about because just, I mean, you have a sore, but if, if it doesn't hurt, you're gonna probably just ignore it. Uh, if you have a spot on your skin, doesn't have, doesn't have to be a dark spot. Actually, there's, um, there's something that is called actinic uh, keratosis which is associated with sun exposure. Uh, it's very, very common among people of, I would say older than 45, even 50, which are some white spots on their hands or on their head if they're bald or on their face, which are hard and they, it's like white, like pearls, that is called actinic keratosis. Uh, and it's a pre-malignant lesion. So, not only look for dark spots, but also uh, white spots. They can also be a symptom. Um, of course, uh, blood vessels in the center of any bump or anything that appears on your skin, uh, like th this little purplish lines that go to the center of the spot, that means it has blood supply there so that that's something you should take care of uh, or, or get seen because that's suspicious. Uh, well, like I, I said, the pearl and hard black spot and changes in moles. And there's something that is called the ABCD of moles that you should really know and um, like apply. This is basically it. Um, a stands for uh, asymmetry. Um, that means if you take your mole and you kind of divide it by in by the middle, both halves should be very similar. Uh, as you see in the picture there on the right, um, in the A, you'll see a mole that it's very asymmetric. One half doesn't look anything like the other one. So that's something you should take care. Uh, the B stands for border, which basically means how regular the border is. If you see on your left, 
which for somebody might look like a very nasty mole or something. But you, if you see, you, you can see that the borders are very defined, very neat. In, in the other hand, you see the one on the right, which is like, it's very difficult for you to draw a border. Uh, you don't know when it's, where it starts and where it ends. So that's definitely a, a sign that you should like pay attention to that mole. C stands for color. Again, you, if you see the one on your left, it looks like very dark, but it's very, the color is very like, very similar no matter, no matter where you see it. But on the right, you can see it changes colors. Like it's darker on the left side and it's like, I don't know, like it has certain darker spots or points. So that's also something you should, you should um, watch for. And the diameter, which is, which is the D. Uh, anything bigger, I, I would start paying attention to everything less than uh, 0.5 centime centimeters. Um, and not only, I mean, talking about size, not only the diameter uh, counts, which is important, but the, um, how fast it is growing. So if you have a mold that you don't know that might have certain of this A, B, C, or D, and you are worried, take a picture of it. Or, or at least look at it every day to see if it's changing. Also, if it's bleeding with for no reason at all, then that's something suspicious. So just take uh, to account this A, B, C, and D, which is very useful. Um, when we talk about um, oral cancer and skin cancer, we we kind of know what we're talking about, but we usually don't know how to identify um, these cancers, or at least we think we have certain ideas. Here I have some pictures of, of how they look. Uh, there you see the um, um, basocellular one in the left, in the middle the scanocellular, and in the right the melanoma. Um, but there you see um, an image of a melanoma, malignant melanoma, in the sole of the feet. So you should, that's something that we don't, do not uh, think about, but I wanted to show that picture because I want to raise attention. And is that melanoma can be in certain places where actually we do not get exposed to solar rays, to sunlight. Who would imagine you could have a melanoma on your feet and it's very common actually there is something that it's very weird and seems to uh, contradict everything that I'm saying and is uh, melanoma melanoma usually appears in places which are not exposed to sunlight as I was saying it seems to contradict but it doesn't mean that it's not related to sunlight just that it appears in places that are not exposed. But the, in this case, this is very common, so I would, I would ask you to watch your feet all the time. Do it, it's very good to do it, you know, and between your fingers, that is also a very common place for melanoma to be. Because there's people, once melanoma, it's like that on the picture, it might be too late. Um, melanoma is a malignant type of cancer which can, which is very, very aggressive and can um, spread to certain other parts, including the brain. So uh, that's why we try to get uh, to diagnose the melanoma when it's very, very early. There you see another kind of melanoma that's um, under the fingernail, and it can also be under the toenails. Um, but that's something you should really look. It has the same um, features as the regular melanoma. You can see the color is kind of different in one side from the other. It has, it's asymmetric. The borders are irregular. Uh, and definitely it's big. I mean, if you have something on, because many people have moles on their 
toenails or fingernails. I, I actually have one. That that doesn't mean it's cancer, but if it starts growing or bleeding or something like that, well, or if you didn't have anything and suddenly you see something like this, you should definitely go and see some uh, see a doctor. Here you can see, I mean, um, certain sores in the tongue are very common. I mean, we certain people have it more than others, but I would say everybody has one in I mean one or other a year I would say so it is not something we usually pay attention but if you start seeing that this uh, starts right there with a whitish color kind of hard that you that you kind of um, are not able to talk because usually it, it hurts and you cannot speak well because it hurts but if it this it's actually causing uh, damage to other structures, like it's bothering your teeth or the inside of your mouth. That means probably it is harder than normal, and that might be an indication of so that something's wrong. Then it starts evolving like an ulcer, which means the center uh, starts getting deeper and deeper and probably reddish. Uh, this is also <clears throat> uh, a cancer that can be very um, aggressive, not as aggressive as, as the melanoma, but can also spread very easily to lymph nodes on the neck. So we try to um, catch it as soon as possible, of course. And here I have another picture of other types of melanoma, which are in the sclera of the eye, which means in the white part. Uh, so yeah, there there are different types of melanoma, and not just the simple and, and normal um, mole in your in your body. So you should definitely um, take care of that. There's actually melanoma in the inside of your eye, which obviously uh, manifests like uh, with vision loss and things like that. But of course, that's very difficult for you to check yourself. So this is. These are basically the ones I want you to pay attention or extra attention because probably the other ones are more common. Well, what should we do? Um, here's a little picture which explains something about the sunlight and how, how we try to deal with that. Uh, sunlight has UV light, ultraviolet light, which are certain rays that are that we call in a certain way radioactive they can go and penetrate the skin and go into the center of the cells causing mutations and uh in this case damage to the dna which results in fast growing and reproduction of the cells uh, with sunscreen what we try to do is make those rays uh bounce of the skin without causing them, them, uh, damage. Studies have been done and they, now we know that SPF factor, which is soundproof factor, uh, everything above 15, you can see that on the label of every sunscreen, gives you about 93% of protection. That means of 100 photons, which is the particle of sunlight, uh, 93 will bounce away and only seven will enter, which actually it's a huge reduction of, of harm to your skin. But I, obviously the higher you use the sunproof, so that means going from a 50, SPF 15 to an SPF 30, it will um, <clears throat> protect better. Uh, but if you're gonna use one, at least start with a with a SPF 15 and nowadays there are even SPF 100 it is they, they go very similar to 100% of protection i don't think they can actually go exactly to 100 but something very similar um wh while i was doing this presentation and i started reading certain things uh i discovered when well, i was actually looking for this uh images that there is like a rumor that uh, uh, sunscreen causes cancer. And I couldn't believe what I was reading because uh, they said certain, um, certain of, of the chemicals that are in the sun, 
in the sunscreen are actually the ones that are causing skin cancer. Well, now we have done uh, research about it, and that is not true. Uh, those uh, certain chemical products that are in sunscreen are also in soaps, shampoos, and they do have certain relationship with cancer, but not with skin cancer. And now, of course, those products are being taken away. So now, the, probably the sunscreens that you uh, buy are not going to be are going to be paraben free, which is a substance that was kind of worrying people and certain others. So please use uh, sunscreen it's safe to 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 do it the risk of actually getting cancer from using it it's totally totally um i mean it's very very low compared to the benefit you're gonna receive what to do obviously uh, check your skin all the time try to do it regularly we think we do it uh but sometimes we don't have time or I don't know, but just do it. Look at your skin, your shoulders. I mean, naked in the bathroom, right in the mirror. Try to do it. Check your feet. Check your armpits. Places you don't usually check, but do it because, you know, I mean, the, the, the key is doing it on time. Obviously, the mouth. I mean, we don't, we don't check our mouths very frequently, so try to do it with a mirror while, while you're brushing your teeth before you do it or after you if you want that's a recommendation now there are several apps i'm not gonna say uh one in particular but uh, there are several um smartphone applications that you can actually use to track not diagnose this is very important because nothing in an app or here in a webinar it's intended to be diagnostic just as a guideline for uh, what you should do but if you have one mode that it doesn't seem to be like right or it's suspicious the apps take pictures and they track the borders the color the size and they give you recommendations take one picture in one day in two days in five days and it will track the changes and somewhere it will actually tell you well this is something you should get um checked and obviously the pictures are something that are very good for us doctors to see like hey doctor this is the way this mole was a month ago ago and now this is the way it looks now so i would recommend to do it mm. that image seems to be in the wrong place but it's not uh using uh barrier protection it's very important because like i was saying human papilloma virus it's uh one of the risk factors for oral cancer so there is oral sex so that image is in the right place i would recommend to do it um <clears throat> and uh definitely if you think something's wrong go to your doctor to get that spot or that sore in your tongue um checked okay uh, what if, you, if your doctor tells you that you have cancer or you think you have skin cancer or oral cancer? What should you expect? Well, usually um, skin cancer is caught on time. It grows slowly. And this information, it's definitely not uh, about melanoma. I'm talking about the other two types. Uh, but usually we can uh, diagnose it with time and only... Uh, local treatment will be enough. Um, how I would uh, we we use extreme cold, like to uh, kill the cells that are producing the cancer, so that way we 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 can um, manage it. And that's very simple; it takes seconds. Obviously, excision, which is just taking a, uh, with a with an um, surgical process, procedure uh the piece that it's affected it, it's if it's on your face on your arms or whatever it is just take it out trying to take as much as you can <clears throat> the same happens in the tongue those are like local excisions we call that if it's a little bit more advanced we can uh, use radiotherapy of course especially for oral cancers and last resource uh, or, or for more advanced cancers is the the regular chemotherapy 
which of course uh, we're trying not to get there. Uh, the message here is prevention, it's better than the cure, so try to prevent. It's simpler, easier, cheaper for both the health system and for the patients. So that's my recommendation. Uh, thank you very much for uh, listening and uh, please uh, come forward with your questions. You know I like questions, so uh, I'll be listening to you. Uh, Dr. Jamie. Yes. I have a couple of questions. First one is, um, I've known people, a couple, two or three people over the years who have had skin cancer, and they're like coworkers, but it seemed like um, they go in like every year, every couple of years to get something else re removed. And I've often wondered, do some people, is it because some people have more of a natural propensity to be affected by a skin cancer? Or is it the fact that once you've had a skin cancer, you're more likely to, 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 to be affected by it again? Well, the answer is uh, uh, yes to both. There is certain people that has uh, propension to have skin cancer because there is a genetic factor that I forgot to mention, but it, it is important. If, if somebody in your family had or has skin cancer, probably you have an increased risk of having it. So yes, there are certain people who are more prone to have skin cancer. And if you have it, uh, obviously it's the, the chance of you getting it again, it's also higher, um, especially because the damage to the DNA in the cells happens uh, not, a, not to a very small part of the skin, but to a very big part. For example, the whole face, the whole neck, or even the whole upper uh, body, if you get that exposed to sun or any damage. So yeah, they might take a little bit here, but the skin is equally damaged in the other side of your body. So you, yeah, you have a greater risk or chance to do it. Uh, I mean, to develop uh, cancer. Is, in, in the early stages of say skin cancer, is there like pain or sensitivity in that area? Mm, it, uh, not not very not typical. It's not very typical of the cancer to to be to manifest like sensitivity or change in the in the filling of the skin, uh, because even though uh, the nerves might come out of the skin or or be near the part where the skin is affected, uh, they are usually not affected by the cancer. So I mean, it could happen. There could, there could be certain um, nerve that it's pinched by certain cancer, but it's not usually very typical of that. Okay. So, so if, if, say, for instance, someone had skin cancer, say, say on the shoulder or arm or something, and they had it removed, and after it healed, uh, like a mosquito was to bite them in that area, would they feel it? Well, uh, that's more... more um, related to the procedure than to the cancer itself. Okay. After you get, after you have a scar, the scar tissue usually has uh, sensitivity problems afterwards. So probably you won't feel it. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Dr. Mesa, you mentioned um, hot beverages being dangerous. How would that um, lend to, um, to cancer. Well, there, there are some um, theories about it. One of them, uh, I mean, the hot beverages is related to tongue cancer, which is one type of skin cancer, which is the scamocellular cancer. Why? There's a, uh, the theory that we manage right now is that uh, hot beverages damage the cells of the tongue, so it causes them to reproduce faster. And uh, and tongue is one of the tissues that heals faster. If you get a, a sore in your tongue or a cut, it will heal faster than one on your in your hand or in your arm. So it is a, a, a tissue that it's reproducing very fast. So if you 
uh, cause certain harm or damage, it will uh, eventually uh, cause that process to get out of control. I see. And also, you mentioned about mold and looking at um, the dimensions of it, whether it be A, B, C, or D. Um, you would only know this by having some type of surgery, is that correct? Uh, excuse me, can, can, uh, can you, you, you... You would only be able to recognize the type, um, the type of, the, the, um, the, the range of the mold, whether it be A, B, C, or D, by having it surgically um, removed or something like that. No, 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 not at all. I mean, the A, B, C, and D that I showed are like wow. certain tips I would like you to remember. Like A, if you see your mole, you're just watching it in your yeah, hand. Yeah, it's a metric, yeah. Exactly. That is something yeah. that you should watch. Not, not, not in the surgery, but for you to watch. Then you, oh, you think okay. yours has those conditions. Go to your doctor and he'll decide if they have to take it out and do some other studies but but the a b c and d are for you okay no way i was asking that because you had made comparisons to it that one side you know should represent the other yeah i mean you can draw a line in the middle of the mole and uh -huh. see if one side it's similar to the other usually uh, normal moles are circular, are very round uh, in shape, so you can actually, one half would be very similar to the other. But if one side doesn't look like the other one, like say one half is very round and the other one is very like star-shaped or something like that, that's oh. something you should take. Okay, 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 all right. Okay. Within the last two months, within the last month, I had two incisions to remove something from my back and one from my tummy. But they weren't moles, they were blackheads. And on the, the blackheads, there were tissue. Uh, the one in my back was very inflamed, but I went to the dermatologist and she removed that. She also removed the one from my tummy and they sent it to the pathology lab. But then they both came back malignant not malignant, benign. Um, does that have anything to do with the moles, you know? Well, uh, no, not really. Uh, it is very common to have uh, those um, cysts, we call them, mm -hmm. uh, which are, uh, yes, uh, essentially very big black heads, which is the, the cells that produce certain lubrication to the skin, they get clogged. And uh, simply that that um, material doesn't have anywhere to go, but it just stays under the skin. But it's not related to any type of cancer of the skin, uh, at least none of these three that are the most common. I, I'm not really sure about others, but I don't think it's related. It is a common thing and it's usually benign, as you were saying. And another question. You talk about people being in the sun for lengthy times what about the people that lived in the caribbean it's a very sunny place and most people walk do they have a chance of developing skin cancer yes of, of course of course everybody has chance uh the of course the body it's it's very um intelligent let's say that and uh you can see that people that are that are exposed to the sunlight frequently they develop tanned skin. So people in the Caribbean, we have certain uh, dark colored skin, which is protective um, for that type of cancer because uh, the melanocytes, which are the cells that produce pigment, they release that pigment. So the sunlight uh, will bounce off. So it uh, works like a sunscreen, but uh, nonetheless, they have to be careful anyways, because they still have a chance. Probably it's lower than the uh, people with wider skin which live uh, somewhere else, but they still have a uh, certain chance to have it. 
Because most of those people, I don't think they can afford to buy the sunscreen to put on their skin. Yes, I, I understand. But unfortunately, uh, science and medicine discover certain things and they start to be, I mean, as we develop cures or way to prevent it, they, are, they cost a lot of money. Some people say that uh, coconut oil might be a good uh, way to replace it. I really don't know about it. Uh, I, I would just say try to avoid and wear hats and clothing. I know it's very hot, but that's the way you should do it. Or at least try never to burn your skin uh, under the sun. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Another question, Dr. Um, Mesa. How difficult or how easy it would be to treat like melanoma of the eye or the tongue, seeing that those are sensitive areas. And also, um, like you sort of graze over it a little bit, um, someone that developed cancer, oral cancer, because of, um, of intercourse. Well, um, first, treating melanoma, no, ma no matter where it is, uh, can be challenging. As I was saying, it uh, grows very fast and it spreads very fast. If you get it early and it's uh, local, it can be treated easily no matter where you have it. Of course, uh, if you have a two centimeters melanoma in your hand, it's easier to treat it than if you have a one millimeter melanoma in your eye. Because usually you have to take part of the tissue uh, to treat it. So of course, the eye is a very challenging place to treat a melanoma, but uh, if you get it very early, it can be um, saved. Uh, I would say uh, it's not regularly the case. The image that I showed, which is a very, very extremely rare case of melanoma in the sclera, that I would say can be, um, can be treated without causing any uh, severe damage to the vision. But if you have, have melanoma inside of the eye, that's, an, that's a different um, story. I, I would say uh, it's more difficult to treat it and will definitely result in so at least in some um lo i mean you're gonna lose some vision um oh. about the tongue uh it's basically the same the procedure is just uh taking away uh taking sorry uh part of the skin uh, of the tongue in that case how big it depends of the uh, on the size of the tumor because the the goal is to take uh, away the whole tumor and not, not leave one cell that it's cancerous because that, that would mean the cancer will spread again. But the cancer that it's um, spread or that, that you had because of the human papilloma virus that you contracted through uh, intercourse, that can be treated with only cryotherapy, which is um, burning the cells with cold uh, but of course, has to be done with a special device because it has to go all the way in your mouth and probably uh, through your larynx or esophagus. Uh, so we, I would say it is technically it's a very difficult procedure, but it's uh, for a for a well trained doctor it, it would be something uh, normal that would probably take I don't know one hour to do it. Mm -hmm. Okay, right. thank you. Okay. Dr. Mesa, with yes. um, tr treating a uh, uh, tongue cancer of the tongue or cancer of the mouth, does that eventually affect the person's speech? Um, it can, it can affect, uh, especially uh, well. The the most common way it affects it is if they have to take like a big part of the of the tongue but nowadays the surgeries they've developed for that uh there's a the most common surgery that is done is called a hemiglossectomy which means uh removing half of the tongue uh but now the reconstructive uh 
surgeries that we have, they actually take part of certain other muscles uh, in the neck. They can use it or somewhere else to re uh, like to reconstruct the tongue. And they might uh, have a little speech impairment, but not not a very. I mean, they will still be able to communicate and to talk. Thank you. Okay. Okay, well. Um, I have one you. question, I'm sorry. One last oh, question. Oh, go ahead, yeah. go ahead. Um, okay, so you were, you were talking about one way to gauge, one way a person can gauge whether or not they have skin cancer or something to worry about is to look at moles on their body and use the A, B, C, D rule that you described. Well, I think the C stood for coloration or look for the color of the mole. Um, what happens if, I mean, are you really talking about one mole changing color or are you talking about having a brown mole and having a red mole and having a blue mole? I mean, which is more problematic and what, what are you really describing? Yeah. Uh I'm describing uh, one mold changing colors. Uh, usually people have certain red spots that they also call moles. Those are nothing related with this, so you shouldn't worry about it. Um, but if you have a mold that was usually brownish, like light brown, and now it's turning darker, that's when I mean color, like changing in the color of that same mold. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Well, thank you everybody for, for listening to this presentation. Again, thank you to Brybot uh, for sponsoring. Uh, I hope we can meet again. I love your questions. If you have suggestions, you can do it in, in some other of my, of my uh, webinars. Uh, have a very good night and please uh, try to prevent all of these diseases that I always talk about. Check your body and you'll be very healthy. Thank you.